Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Law. I'm your host, John Drohan, with Jay Marston, who is also your host. We are both hosting this show together. There's a little bit different, a little bit different feel today because today Jay and I actually put on the headphones, so we feel like we are on the radio for real, as well as being on TV. I just have to say one thing and one thing only, Jay. How are you doing today? Oh, I tell you, it's like I don't know. It's like, it's like yeah. you sit on the edge of your seat. You're just like. Introduce me, introduce me, I want to talk, I want to talk. Yeah, you, you paid for the whole ticket, but you're only going to need the edge of your seat. Isn't that the, isn't that the line it's right you there? Pay, you paid for your seat, but you're only going to need the edge. You're only going to need the edge. What was that from? Remember that from? That was from the Boston Blazers. Actually, Way I, back in the day. I, I The first time I heard it was uh, I, it was at this monster truck oh, rally of course it was. in, yeah, uh, in Fort Drum, New York. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. You monster paid for truck. the whole seat, you maybe, only need the edge. Maybe, a, uh, maybe at a uh, some type of cowboy festival or something of rodeo or something now, like that. there's not, not a lot of cowboys in upstate New York back then. This is, okay. you know, going on 20-some-odd years ago. I think uh, they've it, moved in. I think was, they've moved in. It's a yeah. thing now. It's a thing now. They, I, I tell you what. So the, the nice thing about um, moving to ups, because I originally, you know, in the military, kind of spend all your time in the south and being the first year of my military is down in you know outside of atlanta georgia columbus georgia right fort benning and it's down there you are in the south oh, and you want yeah. to talk, you want to talk about getting you know i'm, I'm originally from i'm from new york where right? you want to get like inundated with country music like, <laughs> that's right you know right. In, in 1991 there wasn't a whole lot of country stations up at you know in the yeah. greater tri-state area <laughs> you guys get your music yeah we get both kinds country and western down <laughs> you get, here yes. you get down you go down to columbus right. georgia it was like one after another right oh, yeah was, all day long and now look at it now it's everywhere yeah, so the kids I, are into it now. Was Everybody's say, into it. What I was going to say, I, I when I, I my first duty station was in upstate New York. It was nice to kind of get a little break, get back to the north. Back to some know, disco. Only have yeah, only <laughs> have Studio Fifty Four. Two country stations to pick from. But, yeah, I, don't, I don't mind. I don't know, but you you are absolutely right. To now now it is red hot. It's oh yeah. everywhere. Yep, it's it everywhere. is red hot for all the right reasons. Love it. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. Americana, America. baby, Americana. Yeah, it it I yep. I, I agree, sort of. No, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I like I like it. I do. I like it. And there's some songs that I really like. I just don't buy into all of the, I don't buy into all the hype about it. I don't buy into the the, the artist. You know, I don't buy into the drama. Like I don't care. And to me, a lot of them all sound. You know, a lot of it is like kind of the same beat. It's very simple music. You know, from a, from an accomplished that's, uh, Drohan, by the way, that's from, not from an Marsden. accomplished musician Drohan. like yes, myself. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know what's funny? You'll appreciate this, and then we can jump onto the show. But when we go on the mission trip every year with St. Mary's, and we go down to someplace very hot and very humid, right? And we do a week's worth of mission work, and the kids have a blast. It's a great trip, and. Uh, this year we'll be in Gainesville, Florida, right, home of Tom Petty. And uh, when, as a chaperone, home what they Florida do is State they, University. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. So as a chaperone, they line you up with some of the team leaders on the trip, and these so these guys are going to sort of help you, you know, kind of, you know, put they put you in a van and you drive to the different job sites. And so as as the chaperone, and you're in a you're in a, a car with a bunch of high school kids for a week going to your job site. When you jump in that car, which could be a solid couple of hour ride from the airport. Sure. You are crossing your fingers because the kids all have, they obviously got all their phones and they get all their iPhones and they all got an aux cord, right? It's the most important thing they own next to, I don't know, nothing, aux. right? They get that aux cord. And so the first thing you hold your breath for is, what's the playlist going to yeah. be like, right? Yeah. And you see what happens. And if, if you get lucky, their playlist somewhat matches up with your particular taste in music. In, in other words, you recognize several of the songs. You recognize one song sure. per hour. Sure. You're way ahead of the curve. So if that doesn't break your way, you could have a could be a challenging week, and yeah. you might have to exercise a little uh, chaperone. Uh, I, on the other yeah. hand, on the other hand, if you kind of came at it just from a different angle, from a different from a different ahead. glide path, a different yep. different different heading. Yeah. Um, you could learn a lot about music that you don't know about. Now, yeah, no, granted, you're no, not going to... No, I, absolutely not. I, I, and I hear what you're saying, right? I mean, I was just saying the same thing, like, about country music. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't I don't love all kinds of music. I certainly don't. But when I, particularly with my older daughter, when we used to ride to school together, oh, yeah. I was introduced to the most inappropriate rap songs, you know, that I sure. could... That, you know, where, where I, I grew up, I listened to rap, but not that stuff, right? And, yeah, yeah. and Lily... Lily Found it. I mean, it was you know it was popular back then. So and my so my daughters have taken on they've taken on my set list. You know they've yeah. adopted that as well, you know songs that you know, songs that you grow up to. You know yeah. so 
There's a lot of Bob Marley in there. There's a lot of, you know, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of classic music, that's right? right? That's right. So and, and you just, and, and all you can do is just, you're like thanking God as you're driving, like, oh my God, yeah. is this for real? Oh, oh, did you really want to listen to the Eagles again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Which one? <laughs> oh my God. The live Elvis Aloha from Hawaii. You want to hear that again? Let's get into right. it. Fantastic. As you're wiping right? tears from your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to pull over. Riley, I'm going to pull over. I love you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, suspicious minds. Classic. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, uh, um, so, all right, so before we get started today, oh, I got my basketball. So we, before, oh, before we get started, I want to, uh, of course, welcome our esteemed colleague, Christian Chris Baudet from Hollis and Cable Access. Who just said to himself, I don't recognize any of the names of those. Yes, he does. Yep. Yes, he all does. Right. He, he's, I bet he, he's got some classic playlists, right? All right, Christian, um, don't, don't. He, he strikes a Bob give Marley us, Give me a thumbs up. All right. Ha, have you ever heard of uh, Bruce Springsteen, the E Street Band? Just give me thumbs up, yes or no. Uh, he's giving All me right. the thumbs All up. Right. All, All right, so he knows. Uh, have you ever heard of? Um, have you ever heard the, the Eagle song "Desperado"? Wow. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> do I need to sing a few bars for you? Don't do that. Oh, Don't do that Christian, for our listening audience Christian. at home. All right. Well, you know what? Was... You know what we need to do? We need to bring Christian on this side of the camera for, for one show. All right. We'll do a show for you. We'll dedicate a show it's to a Christian that. show. We'll have some yeah. homework. We'll have it's going to be, we're, we're going to do like Christian. We're going to like, just give him like a, like a, just a, like an hour long, like quick, like, Lesson into adulthood because yes. Richard's a young adult, right? But say, here's some like if we could go back to your Christian, you're 25 now, right? Yeah, so Christian's 20. So we could go back to be 25. If you like knowing what you know now, what, what advice what do, you do wish, I have for 25 oh, year old right? Jay? Oh, stop, All please. Where does it end? Long, Where does right? it end? We need more than an hour. We, we might have more. to do that. We have to do it with Christian. It's just gonna, it's we're gonna be like peppering him, like he's gonna sit in the middle, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, be tough. All right, so before we get started, I want to do a quick shout out because I'm go wearing ahead. the special t shirt today. I'm gonna introduce you to my friend. Jeff Moxham, uh, a.k.a. Mox, you know, obviously, right? So uh, Jeff Moxham, who is, uh, he's our age. He went to Brookfield High School, not a man. I went to the Catholic school. He went to Brook, but we were all living in the same town. Um, Jeff Moxham, who, if you met him, I can't, I, I would I would need a stopwatch to, to, to time how fast you guys would become friends. It would be that quickly. <laughs> you, you guys would eat each other. And you may very well meet him. I mean, you would, I, I mean, like I could, I can't say it. Like super guy, super guy, as as described by all my friends, top notch. So Jeff, unfortunately, three years ago, and I've told you about this yep. story. Yes. Three years ago, had a, had a horrible accident, which uh, which left him paralyzed from like just above his waist down. So he's been, he's you know he's been dealing with that for the past three years. Um, we uh, and and part of it, I mean, the the paralysis of course is awful, um, but the, one of the the hardest things that he's dealing with now is he's in perpetual pain, like constant pain. Um, and that's the one thing that, you know, that is really kind of, that, that's really brought him down. So we, you know, he has some good days. He has sure. some bad days. Um, you know, there's all of my friend group back from Connecticut. You know, everybody, you know, he's got, a, like I said, he's got a million friends. He's, he's got a thousand different, like, quotes that, you know, that people write down. You know, one of them is, his, his line is, so the other night, me and Beanie, you know, another guy, me and Beanie, we drank, like, a thousand beers. So, like, so that is, of course, I don't know if they actually drank a thousand beers, but, you know, you know, to it. you know. <laughs> You know what it, you yeah. know what he meant, right? Yeah. So that's that's the the classic Jeff Moxham line. Yeah. So we drank about a thousand beers, and then and it's funny when you think about it because they probably tried. They probably you know at one point there was oh, like a call it sure, I'll make a run at it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, come on, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff accepted. Jeff, uh, like you, was a fantastic athlete, right? Oh, so you guys again, your athletic prowess, right? You probably could. Yeah, he's a great basketball player. You, oh. a great basketball player. Name a sport. Pick a yeah. sport. Any so, sport. Yep. so uh, I put this shirt on today, and I want to do a quick because I want to send him this clip. I want to I want to introduce him to you via the via the H cat. Mox, so, Mox. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So Jeff Mox him. Uh, this is the, this show is dedicated for you today. Just know that we're thinking about you, and uh, and you know maybe you'll learn something. You probably won't, but <laughs> you know because he's a really smart guy too. If you have any questions? Call me. Yeah. Don't call him. Yep. <laughs> that's right. I'm going to give you. I'll give you Jay's number. I'll text you Jay's number after the show. Right. And just so you know, in Mox's honor, uh, I will attempt between now and Sunday to drink a thousand beers. That's, <laughs> That's for you, Jeff. What. That's I'll for you. Tell you what. All right. And you know what? He is going to appreciate that. He is going to appreciate Nothing but that. love. <laughs> Nothing but love. Absolutely. Uh, I can't wait. Absolutely. To I can't wait to meet you guys meet each other. All right. So uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, I, have a to I have a topic. Oh, out. Do course. you have a topic picked out? Well, have you no. done any homework? Have I you mean, done any preparation whatsoever? I, had, I was preparing other things for today. My topic, show. just so you know, my topic covers your topic all right yes I've, that's, how we, that. that's how we operate that's how we operate that's how everybody we operate. works together works yep, together that's right so 
this is on the law side. This is what we want to talk about. And I only bring it up because, uh, as we've talked about in the past, most of the case studies, if you will, the things that we talk about on the show, these are real life. These are real issues that come up. I mean, people come into your office. We're not making it up. My office, We're not making it up. And they say, look, I have a question about fill in the blank, right? So a lot of the things that we bring with, obviously, without divulging any uh, confidences, these are the things that we bring home to say to people, hey, you know, this is what some of your contemporaries are facing. These are some of the questions that we get. And these are things that we find somewhat topical. And how do, you know, how do these things impact you guys going forward? So uh, the most recent thing that we uh, had to deal with uh, at our firm and, and on behalf of a couple of clients is uh, when clients get divorced later in life, What's what's to think about, yeah. right? What's to think about? What well, what 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 are the, you know? What are the aspects? What do you tackle, and how do you tackle these things? And uh, what's the best way to look at them? And uh, it's a topic that unfortunately is all too real. But hey, that's the world we live in. Not a whole heck right. of a lot we can do about it. It happens, right? Life happens, right? right. So, so you being a divorce attorney, not a divorce attorney. I'm sorry, you no. being not a divorce, but you, of course, you're you know you. Unfortunately, many of us are, are are exposed to it, experience it in, my, in our practice. You know, we have plenty of our clients that come to us that get that are getting divorced. That you know, and again, the the financial piece is a big part of it. The, sure. You know, it's a yeah. it's a, you know how we're going to manage it, how we're going to move forward, how um how things are going to you know, and it's not up to it's clearly not up to us how things are are going to be divided. But we definitely you know you know based on our experience, we'll say look. Here, you know, here's here's some scenarios the way the way things that we've seen things play out, and you know, oftentimes, you know, divorce is a very emotional thing, so people are kind of caught up in the, you know, get kind of bogged down in the emotion of it. But what we try and tell them is, look, at the end of the day, this is not, and un unfortunately, this is not uncommon. Right. Right. So, you know, when you know you can you can you know this is your situation, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be feel awful and terrible, and you're going to be like so caught up in it, but. Remember when when it goes before the before the judge and the decisions are going to be made. This is you're like in the line of you know twenty people for that day. You know? Oh yeah, oh so, yeah, you're going to get up. You're going to tell your tale, and yeah. uh, and depending on whether you're represented by counsel or not, the judge is going to ask you a bunch of questions, and hopefully all that's been worked out to the degree that it can be worked out. And then yeah, to, to your point, there's going to be five, six, seven people there getting their divorce finalized. I mean, you're going to yeah. you know it's it's a, it's a, so it's, financially, there's there's definitely some there's definitely some steps that will will advise people to take you know uh, right from the get go. And then, uh, and then talk about you know what what some of the, what are some of the options depending upon what your your particular situation is. So yeah, uh, this is uh, this is actually a very good topic. All right, so we'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll come back after the break. We'll dive into this. Um, if you don't want your spouse to listen because of well all the obvious reasons, this would be a good time to come <laughs> back to the radio station later. Go to the website and download this show so that you can listen to it either in private or in your attorney's office. And uh, if you're if you're listening not, to it, but, if you're listening to it with your wife, you can you lean over and give her the old. <laughs> this isn't us. This is but, but, it's, but it's interesting. We should listen to it for our friends. Yeah, we should listen to it for our friends. Well, listen, yep. right? that's and that's the one thing we don't. We, we're like look. We, if 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 you can work it out, work it out. Like we don't, we don't wish divorce on uh, on our worst enemies, but sometimes it's an inevitable thing. But if if that's the case, then you know we help people to get through it. So right, we'll we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back on my FM 101.3, Money and the Law, Law and the Money. The law, got, the law, the and law. The money, money sounds and terrible, the law. right? Money and, the law, yeah. money and the Law, Money uh, and Law, with Jay Mars and John Droan, Christian Bidet in the house and Cable Access TV. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And we're back. Money Law, my FM 101.3. Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. Christian Manning, the two camera con. Um, one for me and the other for me. Yeah, I'm sure. One yep. for your left side and one for your right side. Yeah, because right. I'm a big, uh, big guy. I'm yeah. Big. Yep. Yeah, you're big. I got a right. big wingspan. Yep. 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 Okay. All right. Settle down there. Uh, <laughs> I got a wingspan. I got a wing. You know down. what? For defense. Settle down, Batman. Settle Jeff Moxham. Great down. wingspan. Jeff Moxham, like big, lot of length. When Jeff is a great basketball player. Uh, big wingspan, big wingspan. All right, big wingspan. All right. <laughs> God. Boy, he's going to punch you in the face when he sees you. you no, know, he's going to know. You know what he's going to say is, here, here, here's a <laughs> bottle of 30 year old scotch for putting up with please, my, for putting up with my him, buddy. Don't say my name. And, uh, yeah, that's right. That's Steal right. his shirt. That's exactly Steal right. his shirt. Steal his shirt. Yeah, yeah, give me a shirt. Tell you know what? You, shirt. Say, you go, you know what? Come play in the tournament. Maybe I will. Maybe, that's, maybe I will. Oh, maybe I'll, that's a threat right there. That could, yeah. that's, that could be dangerous. There you go. We'll have, make it happen. So We're going to make it happen. Yeah. All right, so many levels. Yeah. Oh, you know why it's going to be dangerous? It's because you'll get exposed 
because you and I are the same age, yeah. and and if we were in high school together, of course we would have been friends, oh, fast, right? Fast so, friends. So so you and and then you therefore by the transitive property, you would have been friends with all the guys that oh, yeah. I was in high school with, and you would be part of that group. You would so there's as I, I've said a thousand times, sure. there's six yeah, yeah, of us. Yeah. There's six of us. You would make number seven right. from my, from because well, what it does is exposes the soft underbelly, right? Oh. That, that everyone's walking around to keep it in themselves, right? Because everybody has two lives, you know. There's yes. your, there's just life and there's that life. Yeah. So once you start mixing you the streams a little bit, it gets. You get yes, to see yeah, it. Yep, you get to yep, see yep, it all. Yep. All right. I don't know, right. man. You, you, I don't know. That's, I don't know if you, that's intimidating. I don't know if you could crack that. There's been a lot of people that have tried to crack that oh, circle yeah. oh, over the years. Yep. And I'm sensitive years. to that. That's a hard shell. A lot it's of not, people have tried to crack. You... Jeff Moxham cracked that code. Uh, cracked that. He cracked so. that circle. I mean, before he got hurt, he yep. was. He was. He cracked that circle. And the first I, thing he'd probably say to me, he'd be lean over and he'd say, "Run, run away, get out." Like the movie, get out, get out. You know how Moxham cracked it? Let me tell a quick Moxham story. Moxham cracked it. He cracked it with me. Well, he cracked it before because I always liked Jeff. You know, growing up, like I said, we went to different schools. Boy, I bet we're, you that's a relief. We were, fr we were You're probably worried about that. We were friendly. We were, yeah. we were good right. friends. We were friendly. But I wasn't like, I, my other friends were like really good friends. We went to college with them, right? So we're talking one day and it's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, Moxham, he's a good guy, right? This is years and years ago. And my other friend, Brendan Deacon, who's kind of, he's just, he's he's actually, I want to say, probably the sm one of the smartest of the six, which is probably isn't that's saying that. That's 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 saying that. Settle down, settle so, down. Yeah. And Deacon looks at me and he's like, what are you talking about? He goes, Moxham, he's top notch. And I'm like, no, no, I mean, he's a good guy. And he goes, yeah, yeah. stop. He's like shaking his hands. Stop, stop. He goes, Moxham is top notch, like top, top, top notch. And I'm not more like. Top, probably more top than you. Not, not like, way more. <laughs> like, I, like, and he's making it clear to me that, yes, he's, yeah, there's you and you're yeah. not there, right? If you somehow made it yeah. in, he's well above. So, so, so not, uh, I don't know. A year later, right? I get a call from Jeff, and Jeff. It's not like we talked on the phone very much, right? Yeah. I, about a year later, I get a call from Jeff. Say, hey, hey, John, it's Jeff Moxham. Uh, listen, um, one of our friends, uh, his wife has breast cancer, and uh, we're just raising some money. I need you to give me some money if you can do that. And I'm like, oh, what are you? Are you, are you just doing this? He goes, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm organizing this. Blah blah, blah 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 blah. And I'm like, first thing I said, top notch. Yep, yep. top notch. Yep, yep. yep. There right. you go. Way so, better than you. All right, enough said. Easy. That's it. <laughs> all right. So let's get let's let's get into our topic. All right. Talk about gray divorce. First of all, does it happen a lot? The statistics show that it does. Right? Yeah, Something yeah, yeah. That goes we know on that. Right? We know yeah, that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so, right. so the sky so, is blue. So what are the things to think about? Right. So what's what's the first thing you think about? Well, assuming it's the first marriage, assuming it's not a second marriage. We'll talk about that later. But <laughs> assuming it's a first marriage, I, I always look at it. If somebody comes in and says, look, you know, there's going to be a divorce. The first thing I immediately think about is kiss half your net worth. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Right. Right now, and now, it may not be half, but let's start there. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, you mentioned in the beginning of the show that this is divorce, like later in life. So you're, you know, this isn't like a, we've been married for you know two years no, and we're fifty no. years old and we have a prenuptial agreement or anything. No, we're talking like a, you know, like we've been married for a while, more than well, ten years. A lot of this is, you know, what the kids are out of the house. This is real, right? The kids are out of the right. house, and we realize that over the last twenty-five years, we've discovered we have absolutely nothing in common. Right, which and is we, sad, and, 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 and that's right. And then, but at the same time, you're also looking at it and you're saying, look. I'm 55 years old. I got another 20 years in front of me, sure. so I'm making a decision, right? I'm moving on. I'm moving on with my life, and things need to change. So, again, that putting all that stuff aside, first thing you think about is half your net worth. Bye bye. Yeah, and 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 but then there's more to it, right? There's more to it in the sense that if they're children, if they're still dependent children, sure. so, right? So if you still have dependent children, then that's another. You know that we're not talking about just half your net worth. We're talking about what's how, how are the children going to be taken care of? First of all, what is going to be the what's the guardianship going to be? You know, yep. is it is and how is that going to be? And then you know, of course, you kind of goes into without getting in like all the the divorce details. Of what you know, what's the custody going to be? Is it going to be shared custody? Is it going to be joint custody? You know, so there that that has a a different financial attachment to it. You know, well, I, it has a financial attachment to it because somebody's going to have to potentially move out of a house. That house is. Potentially going to be you know, is going to stay an asset until the kids reach a certain age. That's usually part of the arrangement you see. That right. until the kids reach some predetermined age, there's still college tuitions that need to be addressed and taken care of. But also from a from a from a financial perspective and a legal perspective, there's going to be there potentially is some disparity on on who has been uh, potentially the breadwinner. Yeah, right? great question. So, some right. I mean somebody may have really carried the water from an income perspective, and somebody might have said, look. I'll work and I'll stay home. It doesn't matter who it is. There's no right or wrong. It's, it's not a gender specific address. It, it, it's basically saying th there may be some real inequity at that point, sure. right? And and that's going to start now now affect how these assets not only get broken up, but how these assets, the the stress that's going to be on these assets 
later on down the road, mm -hmm. right? Because if you had a million dollar IRA and you thought, all right, we're going to cruise into re you know, retirement with a million or a million five, and now somebody says, oh, oh no, you only have 500 and, and you need, well, you need 50 grand a year out of this thing, that, that starts to change the game. Yeah, and, and you brought up the point of like, look, if I'm, you know, if, you know, if we're divorcing at, at age 50 or where, you know, or in and around there, and I have another, you know, 10, 15, possibly 20 years of where I have to, you know, I'm going to work and I have to earn money. And if there's some, you know, depending upon what the situation is, if there's going to be child support, if there's alimony, right, then, then bam, my, my, my retirement is cut in half. And now my ability to fund said retirement right. is also going to be affected as well because I'm, I, if, I'm, if I'm the, like you're using your example, the major breadwinner, right? So if I'm the breadwinner and I have to pay child support and alimony, that's, you know, then, then that's going to cost me more money. And we're talking like, you know, this isn't like, I mean, it's costing me a lot of money. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, child support is after-tax money, right? You know, that's this is it's alimony, no deduction anymore. No more alimony. So everything, I, I'm, I'm, it's all after-tax. Right. That's yeah. right. That's so right. it's all after. Well, and the other thing to think about is if the, if you have two, you know, again, you get two people and they get divorced. One of those people, if they had been the serious, more serious breadwinner, if you will, they'll have the ability to recover, if you will, a little bit better from that type of situation over the next ten or fifteen years where if somebody else who hasn't been necessarily in the workplace now decides, so in addition to getting my retirement reserves or my retirement assets cut in half, I'm now gonna try to dive back into the workforce, right? right? And then you start to ask questions about, well, you know, what do what the job prospects look like? What yeah, are the, what's what my are the, earning What's capability? my earning capacity? That's right, am I gonna have a chance to make, a, you know, if you went from making zero money and you haven't really worked, you know, in the last seven to 10 years, and you try to jump back into something, what are you jumping back into, and right. uh, you know what's your capacity to save for retirement going to look like? Yeah, and this is all this is also taken into consideration, of course, by the judge, right? There's there is a, there, and that's what people they, they think. Oh, you know, my divorce is going to be different than everybody else's. I mean, it is to you, but to to you know to the courts and to the people who who you know who do this, like I said, day in and day out, it's not going to be much different. So so. When someone comes in and says, you know, here's my situation, Your Honor, this is, you know, we're, we're in a very unique situation. The judge is going to look at you and say, no, you're not. Like, you're in the same situation as the two people that, were, are, that, just, that I just saw and the three couples that are coming in right after you before lunch. Like, this is, this, I, we know you, there, there's a formula for this. So, oh, yeah. you know, there's, there's, a, there's a formula where, and unfortunately what happens is, you know, and I tell our clients this all the time, if you're going to go and fight about it, if you're going to really, and, and unless there's something to fight about, like, and usually that's going to be the custody of a child. Sure, you, you know, sure. that's where, that's where we'll say, look, you know, money's one thing, but you know, if, if it's a, if it's a, a child, you know, you know, the, for the, for the best interests of the child and there's a fight about that, yep. then that's a fight to me that would be worth fighting for. Um, as far as the finance stuff, like you said, at the end of the day, 99 out of a hundred times, you're going to split it. And that's it. There's not going to be any, you know, maybe like a little bit here, a little salt and pepper here, a little sugar here. Other than that, it's going to be split down the middle. Well, and we're talking about retirement assets. So talk about, <laughs> you're talking about non-retirement assets, right? We're talking about real estate assets, for example. If there's still a mortgage on the property, which there very well may be, whether you took one out to help finance college, whether you refinance your property for any number of reasons. But if you're still carrying a mortgage on that property, when that house gets sold, so in addition to getting the retirement hit, if you will, on those retirement assets, if you're selling a $500,000 house that you've both been living in and that worked out fine when you were together, now you're selling a, a $500,000 asset that with no mortgage would put two hundred and fifty grand in your pocket, but with some mortgage puts in $150,000, sure. right? Now you have to go out and figure out, do I even have the resources to buy another place. Right. Or and definitely it's not gonna be a place that what that, that I just left. No, right? it's absolutely not gonna right. be that, right? So now you're talking about either um, uh, you, you well, you're either condo looking at a condo, if that and that again, you, you have to think about this is a substantial change from a from a from a from a planning perspective. Do you have the resources to not only buy the condo, but you, if you're gonna need a mortgage on that and you're just now sort of re entering the workforce are you going to have the resources to be able to put a roof over your head in terms of being able to even buy a place? Sure. And then, of course, if there's kids involved, as you mentioned before, now you want to say to yourself, well, I want to be someplace close to my other spouse. And if my other spouse has greater earning potential than I do, 
Well, they can take their 150, leverage that into another place, and then they can support a mortgage on another place. So now you're potentially competing in a marketplace that you really can't compete in. So that's going to push you into a different. So now you thought, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, we're going to get divorced, and I'm going to stay in the community that 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 I've grown accustomed to. And the answer is no, yeah. because not only can you not stay in that community, but that community doesn't offer you the housing options that you wanted. So now you're pushed into a different community where you're a complete and total stranger, which is far from your support network. So that becomes a real problem. And those types of challenges, again, putting aside the splitting of the retirement assets, now on the taxable side, you may really be struggling to sort of make up some ground. And you may end up renting an apartment, which you're going to be potentially very unhappy about because you're, again, this is a completely different world for you. Yeah. But uh, oftentimes, what do you see though, right? So what, what's, a, what's, a, what's a common formula when you see, so it's like, okay, you know, we get divorced and, you know, the kids are in school and, you know, we want to do what's best for the kids. So, if, so you know, in, you know, like we said, it's, some divorces are, they're inevitable. They, they, they're, they're going to happen. Like the decision's been made and there, you know, there's, not that there's such thing as a good divorce, but there's divorces that are that are handled in a much better situation than others, right? And I've, you know, in our practice, we've kind of seen both ends of the spectrum. Um, you know, if the, if both of the the parents or participants, they have, there's children involved, and they're like, look, we want to put our kids first. We want to do what's sure. best for our kids, and they're they're willing to make compromises for for you know in, in for the benefit of their kids. Then usually that that those divorces are are the are far less painful than the other ones. Right, right. Far less painful emotionally, but way far less painful financially. Because because we've said this to our clients before. Look, if you're going to fight about it, the only people who are going to win, the only people who are going to win, are your attorneys. Oh. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say that. I know that you're an attorney. I know. I don't I, want to I talk. No, I mean, no. but no, oh, you never speak. You I, know yeah. I'm right. Oh, the only people who win. So when you have an attorney and you're paying them, pick a number, two hundred fifty dollars an hour to fight on your behalf. And and the, the the problem is is that the attorneys they know this. Like these divorce guys, they know it. They're oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. I think you got a case. Oh, I think we got to go fight about it. I think we got to go to court. And what's going to happen is you. And your spouse or your ex-spouse are gonna f are gonna fight about it, and you're gonna spend all of that money. You're gonna spend thousands upon well, thousands I mean, of dollars. You're, I mean, you're spending what could be the equivalent of a college tuition, right? You're spending I mean, a, a college tuition, a down payment for a house. Yes, that's right. A, a, a the ability for you to to kind of salvage what you have and and get on with your life and and have a and have a normal happy productive life where you you, you know you you interact with your, you have, you're in your children's lives and, right. and you kind of and and you know life goes on and everybody well and in these scenarios if you can do it right if and, and to your point you know if you've been together 25 years and you're and it's not a case where it's an abusive relationship or there's a, there's a problem that sort of warrants you having to get out and get out yesterday yeah then there's potentially an opportunity to say, look, you know, we know that we're kind of, we've drifted apart, we're, we're apart, we just don't want to be married anymore for any number of reasons. So there's a mediation opportunity in there Heck that yeah. says, look, you know, let's, if we can work this out, you know, I, I'm not suggesting you do it on your own, but I'm saying to your point, if you're trying to tamp down the legal fees for all the right reasons, I mean, we try to tell our clients, look, you, you know, we, you are right, we're the ones that will win, but, but here's, there's a potentially a better path. There's an opportunity to kind of go through the mediation process and say, look, we know the assets are probably going to be split 50-50. We know that's probably what's going to happen. Um, we're not looking to fight over, you know, the, 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 the main house or the Cape house or things like that. I mean, everybody sort of sees what's going to happen here. So let's, let's go through this in a way that is fair, that is equitable, that retains the relationship as best we can if it's possible. And let's not spend all of our money on, uh, on, on legal fees or lawyer's fees because there's potentially a better path, yeah. right? So because potentially can, it's going to be the same whether right. we spend it or not. So what I was going to say before is oftentimes one of the formulas that you'll see, and you were bringing up the idea of, okay, well, everything gets split down the middle. Split the retirement, sell the house, split that. So, so if there's children involved, a lot of times you'll say, well, look, we live in, you know, pick a town. Say we live in Franklin. We love Franklin. Franklin's right. a great town. The kids are in school. Like I got kids in middle school and high school. They, they, they don't want to leave. They don't want to leave their town, yeah, this right? Yeah, friends. It's this, important network, right? yeah. So, and they've grown up in this house, so you're like, look, if you know, if we, I want, we want to be able to keep the kids in the house, right? So, so there'll be some form of a buyout. There'll be some form of a buyout for, for the, you know, the, so, so the one spouse gets the house, right. and the other spouse 
gets bought out of their their equivalent. Of oh, the there's house. a future agreement. You see this a lot where somebody says, "Look, you can keep the house. We'll figure out the support for the house and who's paying what to upkeep and maintenance." But then well, when that's the even young, more. Yeah, that's and, even better. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And then, when, and then when the youngest child turns, pick an age, right? Whether it's 18, whether it's 22, whether it's 24. You know, we're going to then get out of the arrangement. We're going to sell the house. The proceeds are going to get split however they get split. But in the meantime, this carrying costs and there's things of that nature. And, and the other thing to think about is, you know, remember, we've talked about this in the show a million times. Everybody has in their mind sort of a vision of what they think their plan is going to look like. This going down this path means that you may be substantially altering the trajectory yeah, huge. of when you might retire, yeah. right? I mean, if you thought, oh, I'm going to wrap it up at 65, I think this is great. You know, Mary and Bob are talking about it forever, and they have something that's sort of pre-planned, and it's on the, it's on the horizon. This fundamentally could alter yeah. it, and maybe not for both individuals, right? So, you know, you talk about this, and, you know, there's some, there's some latent resentment here that's going to build up when at some point down the road, for all the reasons that we just talked about, where somebody earned less money over the course of their career, which means they put less money into Social Security, which means, you know, you get to think through some of these things. And some of these things will be hammered out as part of the divorce, whether there's pension money and things like that. But somebody may be lining themselves up for a much longer uh, tenure in the workplace or in the workforce right. and a, a much less uh, or a much more altered standard of living in retirement. Yep. And those, are, and and then you have to start to think about maybe some stuff that you thought, you know, down the road. You know, we've talked about before. Like people say, well, I'm not ready to think about whether or not I'd move to the Cape, even though it's a little more affordable. I might not do the Florida move. Isn't for me. These things start to potentially really become, you know, again, you get to figure out whether you want to leave the family, leave your support network. But these are things that really start to pop up to say, look, if if I'm very concerned about not altering my uh, my my lifestyle, the, the quality of my lifestyle. The housing costs in New England or in, in, in Massachusetts are exorbitant, and that may be something that you really have to consider. Right. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to tell you exactly what you need to do. We're going to, if you find yourself in this situation, we're going to tell you exactly what you need to do. So, so when you're so when you're faced with these unknowns, when you're faced with these challenges, you'll be in your best possible position to be able to react to things that the things that you will continue to not see coming. If your wife's coming back from the coffee shop, turn it down, and then you can listen to it later on the She's going to, you know what? Or she your can, husband, or your she, husband. She or he, they can always go, go, to, the they go to the website and they can see this. So it's not like, this isn't like secret information. This is, it's out there. This is, we're t this is for everybody to understand. No, but if you're, but if you're sitting, if you, if you, if you go to the coffee shop and you get back in the car and your wife's taking notes, like <laughs> really taking notes, that's I'm just, not an uncommon thing I'm just with saying, our show. I'm just saying that might that might it's change. Not it. an uncommon that might thing change your show. lunch plans. All right, I'm just we will saying. be. All right, we'll be right back. Money in the law. Jay Marston, John Joanne, right back. And we're back. My FM 101.3. Jay Marsden, Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Maynet for Financial. I think we got those. Christian Manning, the con. We're, we're right here at My FM 101.3. We are talking about, unfortunately, uh, divorce later in life. A gray divorce, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but uh, talking about folks who decide a little later down the road that, eh, you know, maybe the grass is a little greener on the other side. And so you decide to go for it and what that means and the pitfalls to think about and what that looks like. Uh, I got a question for you. Somebody gets divorced, or your couple, your, your clients, husband and wife, come in and they get divorced. Uh, can you still work with both of them? Uh, theoretically, I can. Okay. Uh, theoretically, I can. Uh, normally, uh, we will say we, we probably will not. Right. Um, and again, just from a you know from a strictly you know being in a, just to, to be able to sustain a fiduciary position. Um, and you know this happens. This has happened to us. You know where we're sure. like, well, yeah. you know, hey, well, we'd like to continue to work and. It usually we'll say, you know, the, whoever, whomever kind of we have the, the original relationship with then, or, or it could be, it could be the, the, the couple will decide, yeah, you know what? I never liked that guy anyway, right, or, right. you know, the, the, you know, the, this is, and one, t in one, in one instance, you know, the, the majority of the assets kind of went to one person, which we were managing and they were like, look, we'd rather have, we'd ra we, we think for the good of everybody, that we'd rather keep it there, so then we we ended our relationship with the other with the other spouse. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it might make sense from a mechanics perspective to have those guys continue to work with you until everything's divided, until everything's split yeah. up, and then you can say to the clients, okay, everything's in your own separate piles now, if you will. Now you guys need to make a decision: who's staying, who's going. Yep. And, and like you said, some people just want to put a new spin on everything. They want to kind of go with a whole new life, if you will, and they decide, look, I need to go. 
uh, I need to go in a completely different direction. Right, and, re and remember, you know, just like you, you know, we're, we, we have confidentiality, so if, you know, if one, you know, the last place you want to be is kind of in between, you know, where you're getting, you know, one set, you know, one, one complaint and story, and then, you know, how, how do you kind of serve both people independently and, you know, in, a, in their true fiduciary capacity? And it puts you in a bad spot. Well, the, and the other thing to think about is, you know, there, there may be an underlying tension that exists in the relationship for years that people put off and they say, well, you know, it's, you know the, the relationship hasn't been great, but for any number of reasons, we haven't gone through the steps to get divorced, things like that. What we see on the law side is sometimes people will come in and they'll say, look, you know, um, we, we weren't going to get divorced, but you know what? My significant other, whoever it is, husband or wife, has just been diagnosed with X, right? Mm. Fill in the blank. And guess what? You know what? I don't want to be their caregiver, right? And, and we've reached a very awkward point in our relationship where if this person is going to go to a nursing home or if this person is going to Ouch. be 24-7 care. It's a dark and, divorce. And, and, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, it, it is very dark. Now, sometimes they'll choose, for any number of reasons, they'll choose not to get divorced. They'll just choose to live apart, sure. right? And so, and then what we'll do is we'll have a conversation that says, look, if you choose to live apart and if you're a significant other who you're helping because, you know, obviously you have some skin in the game, you're going to help them transition to some type of assisted living facility and things of that nature. But they will, they will functionally, you know, separate their assets and say, look, you know, we, we sold a piece of property and my, my, my loved one is going to go, my, my not so loved one is going to go to an assisted living facility and they're going to live there because their care needs are greater than mm -hmm. I can provide or am willing to provide. And I'm going to live here and I'm going to do my thing and we've split things. And they still, believe it or not, they might have an estate plan that looks very similar where they say, look, uh, I'm not giving you my money and I'm not going to, I don't want your money, but I want the kids to get it if we're sure. not around. So, you know, there's some nuance as to how some of this stuff can be set up. And then what we'll talk about is, well, look, you know, if you don't get divorced, here's what your, your, your care options look like if somebody runs out of money or if somebody needs yeah. money and how they're going to, because... Yes. Because Guess what? Right. Well, but because you know, because because Medicaid doesn't care that you're not living together. No. Medicaid wants to know. Well, are you are you single or are you a part of a couple? You know, and and you don't have to have a joint checking account for Medi for for you to have to write a check. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So there's so now what we're not suggesting, and and, and clients have asked us this. You know, they come in all lovey dovey. Everybody's you know they're 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 going to go the distance. But then they'll say, well, if one of us gets sick, do we get divorced, right? Yeah. And, 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 I, and we tell everybody, look, you know, <laughs> don't make your marital decisions about your Based loved on, one. On the potential, uh, right, yeah. Uh, on the basis of whether or not Medicaid is going to approve yeah. your application, right? Yeah. If you're in love, then, you know, till death do us part. If you want to get divorced, get divorced. But yeah. don't, don't. Don't they, base they, it on Medicaid. Don't let Medicaid wag the dog. No, and you know what? And they see through that as well. Yeah. I mean, people think they're not going to see through that, right? They, sure. they, that stuff happens, you know. So on the way to the nursing home, we stop by the courthouse and that whole thing comes together. It doesn't work out that way. So let's, you know, let, that's, we're, not, we're not going to advise that as, 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 a, as, a, as somebody's long-term. Divorce is not your long-term care plan, I guess, is the, is the so what do you do? take away. So what, so what do you do if you're, if you're in this situation? What do you do financially? So if you're in a place, so let, let's, we'll back up to the retirement asset. So let's say there's a, we'll, we'll make up a number. Say there's a million dollars of retirement between the two of you, right? And let's say maybe one has more than the other, but it doesn't matter. It's a, we're, we're talking every, all in the, in the retirement. Is board. it amicable? Let me ask that question. What, the divorce? This, this discussion, this kind of like, hypothetically speaking, if somebody's going to talk about it. They're going to say, you could ask them, well, what should they do? Are we, are we so what, what I'm saying now is, is if I, so if, if one of my clients says, you know, I, I'm, 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 I think we might get, we're talking about getting divorced or we're definitely getting divorced. So if they, if they said we're definitely getting divorced, of course, I'll say, don't, but then they'll say, well, you know, it's too right. late. We're going to get divorced. It's bigger than me. Yep. yep. And then we'll say, okay, so here's what you do. Here, so the first thing is, you know, like you said, everybody had their kind of their retirement picture in their mind. Now, by being divorced, is that going to adjust your, could it adjust your retirement timeline? Could it adjust your picture a little bit? Absolutely. Sure. However, it doesn't need to, you don't need to erase everything and then start from scratch. Correct. That's right? right. So, so you still think, okay, in my mind, I'm not going to be married, but I do want to end up in, I want to go south. I want to move away from here. Or I want to be able to live near my kids and be able to help my kids, you know, whatever the, whatever your situation is. So the first thing we do is we say, look, in, you know, you're, you're ever, you have a million dollars in retirement assets. It's, you don't have to cash everything out today because, right. because we explained to them if, if the re if if there's some division of the retirement, depend upon whatever the agreement that you guys are going to make. If there's a division on on the you know with the retirement assets, they don't have to. It's not like you have to cash them out and then 
rebuy every, you know, oh, re, no, no, reinvest. They keep, they keep, that's right. They spin yeah. it right down the middle. So, yep. so, so the, the, the qualified domestic relations order or a quadro, if you have a 401k, that will actually split a 401k into whatever the, whatever the, the split decision has been made by the court or that's by right. the people. That's right. So the first thing is, is you don't have to change necessarily, necessarily change your retirement strategy, right? Now, some people may say, well, my, everything's going to change because as you mentioned before that you know now I'm I'm going to have to buy my own I'm have to buy a place I'm and I may need some of that retirement money one of the things with with a quad, with a quadro is that you have the capability so if a if a spouse gets gets retirement money from a quadro you have the and if they're under the age of 59 and a half you have the capability to use that money without paying that 10% penalty that that pre 59 10% penalty so your, if your plan is going to change where you may need that money sooner rather than later, most likely to purchase a piece of property, or to, which, sure. is, which is oftentimes what they'll do, that money, that, that, then, you, then you may change your, your, your strategy, right? So right. for instance, let's say back to my million dollar example, let's say one 401k has a million dollars in it, it gets split $500,000 to each person. And then the one of the spouses who has the, 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 the spouse who got the quad, the quadro, the, it wasn't their 401k. Right. They have a one-time capability where they can, they can take some of that money. Now, granted, if it's, if it's a qualified pre-tax uh, 401k, you're going to have to pay taxes on it, but you can take the money. Take, let's say you want to take $200,000. You can take $200,000 out, pay taxes on $200,000, not the 10% penalty, and you can use that money for whatever you want to use it for. You can use it for, now, is that always the right answer? That'll, be, that'll depend on the individual situation. Now, um, I just thought of this as we were talking, but I, I guess the, it, it's, a, it's a question for my divorced lawyer friends out there, but is there the possibility that ha to have a conversation about whether or not um, rothing some portion of your retirement account at that stage of, 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 the, of, the, of the transition and whether or not somebody would pay for something like that. Meaning, you know, if you're going to Roth a, a $500,000 401k plan and you're going to get a lump sum payment as part of your retirement, there might be an analysis that says something like, do we want to take this opportunity? Rothing a million dollar IRA has its own headaches So what Jay's talking about, because he's using a little like lingo right <coughs> pardon, now. Like pardon cool pardon guy, me, like, pardon he's, me. He's talking pardon about me. converting converting a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA. Right. So now inside of a 401, if a, inside a 401k, it's going to depend on the plan of whether yeah. or not you can do that. Right. So each uh, and the plan may specify I can't do that inside. Well, of once it plan. comes out of the uh, out of the out of the uh, 401k. It's into an excellent. The IRA. That's an excellent question, Jay. Just, a, just it's an something I'm thinking question. about. Just, I'm just, so yeah, what we so do. remember if so, of course, see, that's why he's the smart guy. That's why he's he that's why you call him if you got a question, because he's got all this. Well, I'm stuff. your man right here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Right. I mean, put this guy, put this guy in the back. Call Jeff. Call in the back him up. I'm telling back you, back. you guys are gonna be, you're gonna be texting tonight. I guarantee. All right. All right. So, so if in the if, if, what Jay's talking about, it, so if if the quad, if if the 401k splits, and now I have a a quadro, right? Right. I can. Now this is there's some there's some there's some nuances. Yeah. Here. There's some rules. There's yeah. some rules. We're so not, yeah, we're not, now. If I take that, of course, a guy like me or even a guy like you who says, oh, well, we'll roll that into an IRA, an IRA rollover. What happens once it comes out of the quadro and goes into the IRA? Now there's no, now that take money out of it without paying the right, penalty, give up all that, that stuff. goes away. Yep. So, yep. so before we do that, we say, are you sure that you're not going to use this money for anything at any time? Right. And then they're like, yeah, or, or before retirement. Right. So we're like, yep, that's that's what we're going to do. So, so now what Jay's saying is, if I roll that into a into an IRA rollover, now I have an IRA roll, now I have a traditional IRA rollover pre-tax. Jay's saying when he's talking about Rothing, it means converting that to a Roth IRA. By converting it to a Roth IRA, what I what I necessarily need to do is, I need to pay the tax. Pay the taxes right? now. I need to pay the tax. I need to pay the tax now. Let's talk through this, right? Five hundred thousand dollar Roth IRA I know. conversion. Yep. I know where you're going. Go okay. Ahead. Yep. So remember, it's not like I can take the money out of that out of that. No, no, that's not, and that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is there is there wiggle room inside the divorce negotiations that rather than taking I don't know what it's going to be cash piece of real estate something like that where you're not going to use the money that's in the Roth IRA to pay the taxes on the Roth conversion. Yep. You're going to somehow end up with other money through some type of horse trading in the divorce agreement 
to get the money to pay the taxes on the Roth conversion. So when the Stay dust- Stay with me, Kaharich, I know right now, I know your head's spinning a little bit right now. Right? Remember, just, just stay with it, stay with it. We're gonna-, we're gonna There's we're a gonna, point here. We're gonna iron this out. So yeah. when the dust settles on the Roth conversion, you still have $500,000, but now all that money down the road, any withdrawals from that account are gonna be tax-free. Oh yeah. Now, here's my thought. My thought was if you're in the situation where you have two people and after the divorce, one of those two people from a, from a potential perspective is going to make less money going forward for any number of reasons, but mm -hmm. their earning capacity is much different. Does it make sense to say, look, at 55, if we've changed our retirement plan and we can put you in a position to have a $500,000 Roth IRA now, that down the road, every single distribution that you take from this 20 years from now is tax-free to you, is that going to have an impact sure. on the fact that you have potentially less earning capacity over the next 20 years? Sure. I'm, That's yeah, my point. Sure. So, right. And, and really, all you have to do is compare a $500,000 traditional IRA versus a $500,000 right. Roth. Right. Do a calculation. Right. right. Yeah. So, How much more income would you have? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Without paying taxes. That's right. So, so of course, if you if you had a pick between the two, you'd take the Roth all day. All day long. All day long. on Sunday. Yeah. Because of, because of the tax situation. Now, could could there be some kind of way? Could you could you negotiate a way to, to, to have the ability to do that, and then in in an, an effort to to say, okay, let's if we're going to equate this kind of down right. the road, then yeah, there's there's a there's an probably an easy way. I mean, to I guess I guess my point is that has this, it been done? Well, no, I'm, but my point is this is one of those money in motion scenarios, right? Where right. where there's going to be a lot of money that's going to hit the table, and the traditional path is either. Do, you know, I understand what you were saying, but but there's an idea that says if we spin this thing out 20 years from now or 25 years from now, what does doing something like that now, while we have the resources to do it, because once the whole thing squares up, that's it, it's over, it's done. done. Yeah. This may be the opportunity to do something like that, to say, look, you're going to have a little bit less money in the bank right now, but you're going to have a million dollar, you know, we can project it out and the possibility of having a million dollar IRA at 70 or 75 years old and every nickel you yank out of that is going to be tax-free to you, sure. that might have real value because a 4 or 5% distribution rate, when it all goes into your pocket, huge difference. Right. I think potentially a huge difference. Yeah, and it, and it, it could be something that, that you know, the, the court can, can recognize as well. And th this is this sounds like something that would come in mediation, right? So Absolutely, this, yeah. this is something oh, yeah. that, that, you know, some sharp, you know, divorce lawyer or sharp financial planner is going to say, okay, your Honor, this is what we want to do, and everybody kind of understands why why we're going to do this. Why yeah. why he or she is going to get more money on yeah. the why on are the you front giving side? up the K pass? Well, I'm giving up the K pass because I'm thinking six moves ahead. I'm going to take cash instead of the K pass. I'm going to use the cash to cover the taxes on my Roth so that this money 20 years from now is tax free to me coming back, and that's going to make up for the possible less retirement money that I might have. I'll be in a better position than I would be if we did it in a Call it a more traditional approach, but just give me half the cake. Oftentimes, yeah. oftentimes in the the divorce agreement will stop at the at the quadro. In other words, sure. the the divorce. I mean, the the agreement that you're going to have to convert it to a Roth or you know maybe that I've never seen that, but maybe that could be some. I mean. Right now, we're doing like advanced level stuff. This is uh, well, advanced well, level we're, conversation. We're getting to the point where we got to wrap it up anyway. So we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll let everybody take a breather right there. If, if somebody's if you're if your significant other's walking back to the car, this is a good time to put away the clipboard, stop taking the notes, go to the website, clipboard. call us, figure it out. Yeah, go to, cool. yeah, go to the website, moneythelaw.net. Everything's updated. Go up, go check it out. Send us your questions. Uh, you can send in. Um, great comments. You can tell how young Jay looks, or how you know smart I look, or vice versa or neither not even those vice two things but that's fine whatever. or not or neither yep um yeah so by all means money in the law dot net uh that's where all that's where all the fun is right and we also i think we have some of the cable access tv videos up all there, day so long you can see. All and you can see us with our headphones on today because, looks real radio -y. yeah we, i feel i feel like way more important so yeah so um before we go one last shout out to your to your new friend jeff moxon who's nice. gonna, who's gonna watch this thing yeah the mox man uh and jeff uh, brains of the whole operation, right? Just so you know, just so you know. Yeah, Jeff, right. you, I mean, you'll, you'll know, we'll talk. We'll talk. you'll know we'll when talk. you know, we'll you'll talk. know when you know. We'll talk. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, 
Before we go, what do you, what's, what's, are you ready for summer? We haven't talked about the summer or weather. We'll talk about, we'll lead into the next show on that. We'll talk about that. The Did you have a good Memorial Day weekend? I had a great Memorial Day weekend. All Always right. a great Memorial Day weekend. All right. All right. Well, we'll be back next week on Money in the Law, My FM 101.3, Howlison Cable Access TV with Jay Marston. He's the law, John Drohan. I represent the money side of the house. We should change it to beer and steamers for the summer, but that's a different beer story. Beer and different show. steamers. A thousand for the beers. Summer. A thousand beers. All right. Yep. The and, thousand, a hundred, and a hundred steamers. The thousand beer journey. And a hundred steamers. The thousand beer journey begins today. Today. That's your homework, right. everybody. We'll see everybody next Have week. Have a great one.